Hello, and welcome to day one of the Advent of Code 2018. Today we'll be solving the chronal calibration puzzle. If you want to follow along, you can check it out at adventofcode.com slash 2018 slash day slash one. The website has a much more lengthy story to go along with the problem, but I'm going to simplify it a bit. We get zapped back in time, and we're trying to solve the mystery of someone or something changing Santa's history. If you ask me, I think Santa had a little too much eggnog and typo to get rebase. But anyway, day one, we have to calibrate our imaginary time travel device. Ooh. For this puzzle, our input is a bunch of lines of integers with signs. Here's an example of how to read and interpret these. You're basically accumulating a value, and each line modifies that value. For the actual data, each person gets their own data set. Well, not quite. They're based on the time that you acquire your data, I think. Mine was about a thousand lines. Yours may vary. The first part of the problem is to just run through the data set and figure out the final value. I've repeated the sample data given by the challenge here, which gives us a few quick examples. Each of these examples start at zero. For example, let's take the first sample. Plus one goes to one, plus one goes to two, and plus one eventually results in three. I'll let you read through the other examples. And just a warning, if you want to pause here and do it yourself, the next slides are going to be spoilers with my approaches and solutions. So whenever I approach one of these problems, I usually like to break it down into words first to explain what I'm going to tackle. In the case of this problem, here's the steps that I laid out. First, keep track of the current frequency, then parse the inputs line by line, add the parsed value to the current frequency, and at the end, produce the final value. All right, let's code this one up. I'm gonna be using the template I introduced in the first video, which has us implement a function which takes in the input and returns the answer. The first step is easy. Make a variable initialized at zero, and we'll use that to keep track of the value. The second step, we'll iterate through each line of our input. Note here that I'm using the string split lines method to get a sequence of lines. I could have used split string of backslash n, but then I would have had to worry about the end of the file. Also, split lines is way more portable and has fewer edge cases. Here's some examples showing how split lines works. Notice here that whether or not there's a new line at the end of the file, split lines will not give us a blank line. Also note that split lines works whether or not we're using POSIX or Windows or even legacy Mac line endings. The next part is to parse the line and add it to our accumulated value. Fortunately, we can lean on the int built-in in Python to do the parsing for us. And putting all those parts together, we have our solution to part one. I entered the sample data into the test suite, and I ran that, and it passed. Here's what I got for the answer for my inputs, but note that your answer will be different, so that number doesn't actually help you. I decided to write up two other solutions to the problem, but they're slightly cheekier. The first converts the for loop we had into a comprehension, and then uses sum to accumulate the values. The second is basically cheating. I'm taking the entire input and putting it in parentheses, and then calling eval which evaluates the string as code. Notice also that I put it in a lambda. This is just to make the code as short as possible, which is usually the goal of code golf. Okay, now that we've solved part one, let's move on to part two. In part two, it's much the same. We're still evaluating the frequencies, but in this case, there's a new twist. The device produces the same frequencies in a loop, and we have to figure out the first frequency that's hit twice. Using the same example from before, we can see that we eventually hit a loop when we reach two for the second time. One, negative one, two, three, and then the device loops, and then we get to four, and then two. Here's the smaller samples that were also given with the problem. I'll let you read through them. I took them and added them to my test suite. Again, at this point, I'm gonna provide my approach and solutions. Pause now if you'd like to hack through it yourself. Okay, as before, I'm going to break down the problem into words, and then we'll write the code for it. 
Like before, we need to keep track of the current value, but we also need to keep track of all the things that we've seen before. Usually when I think of something like this, I'm already thinking of the set data type. Then, like before, we need to parse line by line and update our value. When we update, we want to check if we've seen that value before, and if so, we're done. Otherwise, we record that, and we continue. All right, let's turn that into code. First, the bookkeeping that we'll need to solve this. Note here that scene is our set, which just contains zero, because we started at zero. Next, we'll iterate over the lines. However, the problem tells us that they repeat forever, and so that means an infinite loop. The way to do that in Python is while true. We can also use a special function from the iter tools module called cycle. What cycle does is given an iterable, it will continually cycle through the values wrapping infinitely. Next, we need our update and check code. Like before, we'll parse with int and add that to our accumulated value. Next, we'll check if the current value is inside our scene set. If so, we've found the frequency. Otherwise, we need to keep searching, and so we record the value and continue. Here's the full solution that I came up with for part two. And if we go ahead and run the tests and run it against the input, we'll see my answer. Success! And that's all for day one. I'll see you soon for day two. If you'd like to follow along as I solve these live, be sure to check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash anthonywritescode. And if you'd like to see my posted solutions, they're available on GitHub. For day one, I also implemented solutions in Rust and JavaScript, if you'd like to check them out. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.